everybody, Matt Bell with the Electric Violin Shop. Welcome to another installment in the Classical to Radical video series. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about connections. We'll talk about cables, uh, what the different kinds of cables are that you'll find in a uh, rock and roll or pop setting. We will talk about impedance and signal strength, sort of some uh, technical concepts, because there are things you need to understand and know. And we'll talk about DI boxes and how to connect to the soundboard. With an acoustic instrument, they generate their own sound, right? You play the instrument and people can hear you. There's no PA needed. In an electric setting, you have to plug it in. But plug it in to what? Using what? You may hear a different names for the type of cable that you're going to use to plug your uh, violin in. You may hear an uh, instrument cable, uh, guitar cable, a quarter inch cable. Uh, those are all different names for the same kind of cable. There are two different types of quarter inch cables. There is a stereo and a mono. This is a mono cable. So you see it's got just one long shaft here with an insulating ring and then a tip. Okay, so it's two wires uh, that connect in here. And you see in here when we unscrew this that there are just two little wires. They're little tiny fragile solder joints and that's important. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so this is a mono cable. This is what you want. A tip and a sleeve. Okay. This is a stereo cable, this black one, and you'll see that there's an extra insulating ring here, right? There's a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. This is a stereo cable that can be used to send either two signals in the same direction or a signal out and a signal back. This is not what you want for your violin. This is what you want for your violin. Okay. So you want a mono quarter inch cable and that's going to get you plugged in from your violin into the next step. I want to show you sort of how to plug in a quarter inch cable. A lot of people don't um, do not do this correctly. This is my violin. The jack is on the side of mine. They're sort of different in every case. Um, the quarter inch cable, you stick it in that jack and press it in. You can see, see a little bit of that shaft left right there? That's no good. There's no signal coming through there. Press it till it clicks, and there's no none of that shaft left. Okay, so sometimes people don't they don't want to push too hard on anything. You're not going to hurt it when you force it in there. You just you push it in. It shouldn't be a whole lot of resistance, but you push it in until it clicks. To pull it out, do not pull by the wire. Those little two tiny solder joints that we showed you earlier, that's what's in there. So you start yanking on these wires, you can break those solder joints, and you got a bad cable. And there's nothing more frustrating than a bad cable because they don't look bad, they just are. They don't work. You plug them in, nothing comes out and it makes you yell. So you're going to grab it by the silver piece here. You maybe even twist and sort of pull, push against the instrument, but all the, the pressure is on the silver piece here. Pull that out, right? So we got to understand two concepts to get to this next piece. Uh, we'll talk about impedance and signal strength. Impedance has to do with the amount of electrical resistance inside a circuit. Uh, you can learn more about the physics of this in other places if you're interested, uh, but it's just important to know that term impedance, and we use the letter Z to uh, denote impedance. So violin pickups are extremely high impedance devices. When they talk about guitars being high Z, that's somewhere in the 50,000 ohm range. Violins tend to be in like the million ohm range. Okay, so super, super high Z. Um, you just need to know that your violin is a ultra high Z um, instrument. Okay. The other concept is signal strength. There's sort of three zones of signal strength. The very weakest zone we will call uh, mic level, microphone level. So that's what comes out of microphones. Uh, the next line, sort of the next zone up from that in signal strength will be uh, instrument level, and that's what you got. And then above that is line level, and that's what sort of comes out of powered keyboards, uh, mixing consoles, and all that. So you have a high Z line level signal. You'll see um, those things uh, written on various pieces of equipment, so you just need to know which one of those you are, right? Um, if you are in a church or a bar or you're at a festival where there's a PA provided, you can often plug into that, right, to get amplified but you have a high Z line level signal. Sound boards do not accept high Z signals, so you'll need something to transform your high impedance signal to a low impedance signal that a soundboard can use without getting a thin, buzzy, sort of nasty sound. Um, so you're going to plug into what's called the DI box. Uh, stands for direct inject, but nobody ever uses that. Just know it's, it's DI. 
So you've got your quarter inch cable and you'll be like, okay, I need a DI to plug into and a sound engineer will know what that means. You can see there's a quarter inch cable plugged into it and there's another kind of cable coming out. So that cable is called an XLR or a mic cable. And uh, this is the end that plugs into either the microphone or the DI. It's got three little slots here, three little pinholes. And then this is the end that plugs into the snake or the board. There's male and female connections here. You can probably figure out which one is which, right? When you've plugged this into to your DI, you're gonna line up the three pins. You see the three pins in here, the three pins in here, you're gonna line them up and you press it in till it clicks. Okay, in this case, there's a little button here. You see this little button? This little button is the release because otherwise that's sort of held in there. It's a locking thing so it didn't just pop out. So you push it until it clicks, push that, and then sort of just gently guide that out. All the pressure is on the jack. None of the pressure, we don't pull on the on the cable. And that's what helps our cables last longer, uh, helps the jacks last longer. These are just little tiny solder joints in here. So that's going to help your stuff last longer and it's going to keep people from yelling at you. I see you like yanking on stuff. And... So you're going to plug a quarter inch cable into a DI and then XLR cable is going to go out to either the board or the snake. That's called your signal path. Now there's a lot more to the signal path before anything reaches anybody's ears, but we'll get into that in a later video. So there are two types of DIs. There's passive DI and an active DI. The kind that I just showed you in the picture there is a passive DI, simply a, a box with some transformers in it. Active DIs are the other kind of DI. They give you a little more uh, options as far as contouring your sound or shaping your sound. They also act as a gain stage, and we'll get into gain stages later on, but they, they can boost the level from uh, instrument level. Say if you've got a low instrument level signal, this, these can boost you to a higher or almost to a, uh, to a line level signal. Um, this is an example of an active DI. This is an LR Bags Paracoustic DI. Uh, this is one of my favorites. I really like this. Um, this one actually has three quarter inch inputs. Uh, this is an input and output and there's an effects loop. This actually does take a stereo plug because uh, it's going to send out to your effects and then come back from your effects um, with a stereo plug right here. And then it's got an XLR out. Um, this does require power. There's two ways that you can get that power. You can come through a 9 volt battery that's plugged into it, or it can receive um, what they call phantom power. Um, and that you'll see this little LED light up here it says 48 volts. It's 48 volts of DC power. That comes from the soundboard. Um, so you can ask the engineer, hey, I've got an active DI. I need phantom power. And he will know how to send you phantom power from the, from the board. Phantom power does come through the third line in the XLR. You know that your instrument's got two, right? You see a, a tip and a, and a sleeve. The XLR, there's a positive, negative, and neutral. The power actually comes down that neutral line. If that neutral line is bad, if there's a bad solder joint somewhere in that system, the cable may work in a passive DI. You may have plugged it into a mic and you check it, check, 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 and it's working. You plug it into your active DI and it doesn't work. It could be that that third line, there's a break in it somewhere. Uh, so you might need another cable or you need to check your uh, phantom power to make sure that's on. So that can be a little bit frustrating, but as long as you understand that the, the phantom power does come in on that third line, you can sort of help troubleshoot a little bit. That's all the information I have for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope that was helpful for you. Uh, as always, you can uh, ask questions in the comments section below. You can hit us up at info at electricviolinshop.com. Or if you want to get a little deeper, I'm available for Skype lessons. Uh, you can hit me up at matt7738 at gmail.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.